All right, I think that we will call a meeting to order because we do have a fairly long agenda today. Uh, and first of all, thank all of you for coming and we appreciate you getting here and all that. And it's nice and cool inside here, so we're in good shape. Uh, the uh, meeting will be called to order and we've got to four board members present and one on the telephone today. Uh, Mike uh, Douglas is actually with us, but by telephone. So uh, we'll go from there. Uh, the, uh, does everybody know all of the other board members who are here? I think you do at this point, so it's uh, not necessary to go around with an introduction. You might want to remind them about the sign-up sheet. Yeah, that is that is true. We do have a sign-up sheet in the back that for those of you who would like to speak during the public period, please sign up and we'll just try to take you in order if that's okay. Uh, and we do have one uh, student group uh, that has already signed up uh, that we had, they had asked earlier in the week, and so we've put them on and they'll be first, so we'll take them as when they come up. Uh, the first order of business is the approval of the minutes from the May board meeting. Uh, I believe all of you gentlemen have copies uh, that have been uh, sent around to everybody. Is there a motion to approve? So, second. Any issues or comments? If not, all those in favor? Uh, aye. Okay. So the, the minutes have been approved. Uh, for the second item is the financial report. And uh, Dixon, I think, as treasurer, you're going to do that? I will. Uh, those are in the package that uh, we all have. And I think that we're available uh, to the uh, other members, uh, other uh, mem citizens present. Uh, we had uh, basically uh, and no activities except uh, two uh, two payments to Craft and Toll for uh, their total contract, and uh, and then one for uh, Charles Dilk's uh, travel and his time uh, when he spent uh, two days in Ottawa. And other than that, uh, there there's no other activity. We have invoiced the. Uh, Sponsor members for their uh, for uh, the next installments and uh, the the payment so far uh, uh, the uh, the non-sponsor uh, Children's Hospital has has sent it, it, its payment in and uh, I think we'll have the others uh, okay. real soon. Okay. Uh, any comments or questions from the other board members with respect to the financial report? Uh, if not, can we have a motion to accept the financial report? So moved. Second. We got that already. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, so it has been accepted and uh, becomes part of our uh, our records, okay? Uh, the site selection process is the next item on the agenda. And I need, can you all hear me okay? Uh, we like to be loud. <laughs> Okay, let's see. I don't think, did you all have a hand mic by chance? No, we do not. Um, There's one right there, I think, on that podium. See up on the top? Hang on. Hang. Check, check. See if it works. Check, check. No, nope, nothing yet. Is it turned on? Yes. We'll see, <clears throat> we'll see if we can get uh, a mic that will make it a little bit louder and I'll try to speak up in the meantime. Okay, can you hear me now? <clears throat> I've got a little bit of a, a sinus drip today, but normally my school teacher voice would carry this room without a problem, but uh, maybe not today. Is he gonna get us one? No, that's for him. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. that's his. Sure, sure. Oh, that's what he was waving at us about, all right. <laughs> We're taking wrong his mic. Gear. Wrong mic. He's taking our gear here. <laughs> Can I use your phone mic? <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, I'll just try to speak a little bit louder if I can. Uh, with respect to the cyclist selection process, I don't know how many of you are aware of the uh, meeting uh, of the City Council last night, uh, but there was a great deal of discussion about the Tech Park uh, procedures during that meeting, a lot of public input, 
and the end result was that there were a couple of uh, uh, recommendations that are resolutions that were passed or ordinances I guess uh, one was that uh, all boards of this type should submit financial reports uh, and uh, to that but it turns out that this board anyway all of us already have done that so those are available for anybody that wants to look at them uh, the second was that uh, they had an ordinance for uh, eliminating uh, uh, sites that had uh, uh, communities on them and that was delayed it was uh, actually postponed for six months for us to decide how we were going to go about looking at alternative sites and the third one had to do with um, uh, taking a, a, uh, a six-month six time month, frame, yeah, frame yeah, to, to, to actually, not only uh, reduce the existing sites from but three to also one. to look at other sites. And right. as you know from the last meeting, those of you who were here, uh, the board had already taken that decision anyway, and so we were not unhappy with that resolution because it simply reinforced what we were already doing. So with that, we're going to proceed uh, pretty much as uh, was discussed at the meeting last night. Uh, the city, as you know, is one of the owners, and we heard from two of our owners at the last meeting, and so we heard from our other owner last night, and uh, we will try to adhere to uh, the issues that were there. Uh, Madam Chair, just in case someone in the audience hasn't seen the press release uh, that was released on May the 29th talking about that site selection process because it, it mirrors without giving a specific time frame what Director Compuris's um, ordinance was last night and that was that after hearing from the two chancellors now after hearing obviously from the city uh, the, the process moving forward will include uh, the Craft and Toll finishing their report, uh, the this board utilizing that information and Mr. Dilk's uh, input. input in terms of, of what the Craft and Toll information tells us to eliminate two of those three sites, uh, while at the same time casting a net to look at any and all sites around the community. Uh, we, I believe you are, you are looking at uh, engaging some of the park board members to identify the framework by which that would, would move forward. Uh, but I, I believe in, in what I read in this morning's newspaper since I was not there last night, that this process uh, mirrors what the city board has asked us to consider uh, and we obviously want to be responsive to them and thank them for their input just as we are being responsive and have thanked the chancellors for their input. Right. Yeah, so the uh, site selection uh, will we'll move forward. We will hear from the engineering firm today uh, and we will hope to uh, out of the sites that have been that are under study at the moment uh, what we hope to do is to pick the best possible one of those uh, and then ask for input from the community uh, whomever would like to submit a position for another site we will look at those uh, and then we will out of those with Mr. Dilks's help uh, try to sort out those and look at the best of those alternative slot sites and make comparisons with them and then try to make a final decision and clearly the city would like that decision made within the next six months and we will make an effort to do that. Uh, that's the process by which we propose to uh, continue and uh, I'd like to uh, ask if we could have a uh, uh, vote from the board as to the acceptance of that procedure. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. And uh, to get that, uh, to expedite that, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Mike Douglas uh, and Dixon Flake if they would be a committee of two to put together very, very shortly a position paper of what the requirements are for people to submit an alternative site. What are the recommend what are the requirements that would be that would fit the requirements we believe are necessary for the park to be successful uh, and to uh, provide a form that people can put the data about the site they want to suggest 
in the mill so that we can look at them and compare them uh, all together. So uh, with that, we will be Madam Chairman, can I ask a question? Sure. About, will, that, will that framework include minimum data required in yes. terms of, of, of size and those? Yeah. Okay. That's I correct. Wanted, in other I just words, wanted to make sure. The minimum requirements that we've already set in terms of size, acreage, uh, and and uh, proximity and all of those will be in the requirements, okay? Uh, we will, I think there's no question we're going to get a lot of alternative site suggestions. In fact, uh, once the announcement was made at the last meeting, we've already been contacted by several people with alternative sites. And so these will all be reviewed and uh, in the mix. And so we'll see where all that goes. Would, would it be fair to also say that this process is likely to take a minimum of six months? I would suggest that uh, the chances are that it will because first of all you've got to, we'll have to put a deadline on when you can submit uh, alternative sites and I would suggest that we have that done that if they don't get them in by the, if we can get the, the, the requirements out, Dixon, I would think we ought to be able to set a deadline of something like the middle of July for people to submit sites. And then that gives us then the rest of uh, the six months to uh, try to evaluate those. And to evaluate these sites, I remind everybody here, is not a simple thing to do because you've got to evaluate the, the area, you've got to evaluate the uh, infrastructure that's available for them. Uh, there's just a lot of work that has to be done before one can make a decision to keep them in the uh, criteria or not, I mean to keep them in the consideration or not. But I would hope that we could certainly get it done within that six month period because one of the issues I think that's causing as much angst amongst the communities is the uncertainty of the fact we haven't had a decision. And so we need to move on with that to the extent that we can as quickly as we can. Madam Chairman, <laughs> to get the, the fastest schedule, maybe it would be good if we if Mike and I first come up with the data form. Okay. And because if, with the board's permission, I'd like to consult with Mr. Dilks okay. in, the qual in getting the criteria uh, pinned down and be sure that, that, he, that we have everything that he would want included. I, I think that's an excellent idea. He, he has such long experience at citing these things and his success rate is pretty good. So I think we really do need to take advantage of his uh, knowledge in the area and be sure that we understand what he thinks the minimum criteria are. So I think if we could get the form, that would allow people to go ahead and submit sites. And then we can also then, as soon as you all decide what those minimum requirements are, we can, su we can submit those to people who have put in a site if they like. And that way people can either decide to keep them in or not. I would, and I would, I would just, not being that familiar with the real estate business, I would think that minimum requirements like this might cause some the need to move forward and do some pre-work before they submit things. And so I would just ask that we, that we not get in a big hurry, that we give people time to create uh, whatever is needed for the, those minimum requirements so that any and all sites can be reviewed and looked at so that in the end the best site is chosen. So I, I think I understand the uncertainty, I understand um, the need to to continue the process, but I just wouldn't want to rush this so that we, we missed out on the ability to look at one site because they didn't have time in which to gather their information. Well, I, I agree with that, but uh, the minimum requirements, I think, are going to be relatively straightforward because we're going to have to look at them once they meet that. You've still got all of the issues of infrastructure. We've got to have an engineering firm take a look at some of these things. These, this is not a simple project. And, and my experience in doing just that, it's not a simple process to even get the infrastructure information. No. And so I just ask that yeah. we, we be 
cognizant of the time they're going to need to gather that information. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that, and we'll simply try to do it as ex expeditiously as we can, but we will not be overridden by the time frame. Madam Chair, yes. as, uh, just as a member of the lay public, how will folks be able to monitor what sites are coming in, what sites are being considered? Uh, that's a good question. I have no problem of just putting up the ones that uh, we accept on the website. Yeah. And then people will know what they are. Uh, is that, I think that would be satisfactory. So right? those that, that would be submitted per the minimum requirements, we right. would just add that information to the web. That, yeah, just put it up on the website. And we could, we could obviously also make it a part of our meeting packets so Correct. that we always have a a book of, of those available. But if it's up on the website, then people can make comments if they wish without any issue. Right? Sure. So I think if we do it that way, we should have a fairly expeditious process to, uh, to get this thing moving, okay? Uh, so that's uh, the, the real meat of what we have to do uh, to, move, uh, to get these extra sites into the, into the mix. Uh, the second... Madam Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, sir, Mike, we can. Uh, just a quick comment for both the committee and uh, the community that's there. Um, I am here at the bio meeting. This is the uh, biotechnology industry uh, organization meeting. And I have met with the Association of University Research Park leadership here and just wanted to make the point that they are very aware of uh, all of the issues that are confronting uh, the research park development in Little Rock and stand ready to assist both the community as well as the board members uh, with uh, additional information as they may require. They, they've been through these before and uh, I think there's a fair amount of useful information that uh, can be made available to uh, the community that are interested uh, in alternative sites as well as our board members that uh, are working with the community to uh, uh, make this effort move forward. Okay, uh, that's, that's true. That group does have a lot of history and a lot of information. So it's possible that as we move forward, we may want to call on them to look at some of the issues. They are, they are well aware of the, uh, the issues that are before us uh, and are watching the Little Rock uh, situation as it develops. Okay. <laughs> what are they finding out by watching? <laughs> anyway. Well, I think word spreads pretty quickly. <laughs> okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, Mike, is Mike, Mike, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, Bob Johnson here. Uh, qu question for you. Are, are, have you found that some of what we're dealing with here with regard to the issues that we're, that we're, that we're confronting and facing. It has, have you found that to be commonplace within the, within the, within the industry? Uh, I think basically, uh, as I looked at the report that was uh, put together by the students that I think you'll hear about later, um, we're, we're relatively unique, actually, in trying to establish uh, a research park in an area that is um, that is uh, a populated area. Uh, there are examples, and they will have those examples of where that's been done. But for the most part, these are usually um, projects that reside in areas outside those that uh, move a lot of uh, a lot of uh, existing uh, neighborhoods. Uh, Mike, could I ask you another question? Uh, what is their position these days on proximity? Remember that what we're trying to establish here is a research park that's going to be hopefully uh, somewhat integrated into the universities and the Children's Hospital Research Institute. Uh, what is their take or do they have uh, new experience with respect to proximity to those institutions? I think that's a great question, Mary, and uh, what I would uh, do is just uh, defer to that group and their uh, their response to that. I did not get into real specifics on proximity. I was more interested in sort of the social sustainability aspects of the uh, location of a of a research park, and uh, they they again. Uh, I think can be very useful to all parties that are 
looking to find some sort of common uh, uh, approach to this. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, but that's that's an excellent input, and we will certainly use those people. I know some of them, and that, that's they're a good group. Uh, any other uh, issues from the board itself with respect to the process of going forward with the site selection? Any other comments? Uh, if not, the other issue I wanted to bring up today was that at the last meeting, both Chancellor. Um, Ron and particularly Chancellor Anderson had asked us to uh, think about the possibility of a chairman's committee on the neighborhood housing. And uh, as you, you probably know, we had already planned to do that, but this sort of speeded it up. So we're in the process of uh, getting that committee together. And I believe in your packet there is the name of the people who have been contacted and who have agreed to serve on this neighborhood uh, housing committee. And C.J. Uh, Duvall, who is on the board, will chair that committee. And I'm sorry he's not here today, but uh, he has agreed to lead that committee and to provide uh, uh, access to the community through this group. Uh, I suspect, as I understand it, they plan to have some neighborhood meetings or some public meetings anyway, and those will be announced uh, as widely and circulated as widely as we can as soon as they've decided how they want to manage that. We're not going to micromanage what they do, so, uh, but we're extremely interested in their input. Madam Chair, we, we actually have sent um, an email to each of these individuals looking at two possible dates next week for the first meeting. Um, we were trying to schedule the first meeting at the Willie Hinton uh, Neighborhood Resource Center. Unfortunately, both of those dates uh, were taken, and so CJ is, is looking for an alternate site within the neighborhood. We think it's important, obviously, that as many neighbors as possible be able to attend that. Um, the, the, the question was asked of me before the meeting in regard to why these folks, and uh, for those that didn't have an opportunity to see that press release, what these entities represent are both the sponsors of this entity um, and resource providers of housing uh, within the community that currently exists, like uh, the Housing Authority, Habitat for Humanity from a nonprofit standpoint, but then also uh, as important, if not most important, uh, representation from the two neighborhood associations uh, in the area that, that Kraft and Toll is currently studying. And so this group, um, uh, per your request, has been formed as a working group, a working group to look at any and all resources out there available for the rehab of existing homes or potential funds for the construction of new new homes while at the same time uh, obviously finding ways with the city, its land bank and other uh, resources to uh, encourage developers to come in and build housing on vacant lots in, in that area so that there are alternatives uh, obviously for anybody and everyone and it's it would be an attractant to hopefully get more folks to move back into the neighborhood regardless of, of where the technology park eventually is sited. So uh, we hope to have that first meeting uh, next week and as soon as we have the final date uh, and the place, we will make that announcement public. It will be on the website. We'll be notifying all of, all of the media so that anyone and everyone uh, that wants to attend can attend. Okay. Uh, Madam Chairman, do you need a motion to ratify? Yes, I think we ought, we should do that. If you would so move, I would appreciate it. I, I would move we, that the board ratify the appointments of uh, Chairman Good. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, first of all, I would very much like to thank these people who have agreed to serve because, you know, this is sort of a... Uh, an add-on to whatever else they're doing these days. So I think this is going to is going to be very helpful to everybody. So I'm very pleased uh, because I don't think we ask anybody that didn't say they wouldn't. That is correct. So I I think that's a kind of a neat response. Uh, okay, uh, the next item that we need to move to is with respect to our engineering firm 
and uh, Jerry Kelso is here from Grafton Toll, and I'm going to turn the meeting over to him. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, and um, we'll go ahead and kind of get started here. Um, as you know, when we originally uh, started this thing, what we, when we, our first meeting, we talked about a work plan and really what our task or what uh, we had before us was to analyze three specific sites that were given to us, provide a technical evaluation of those three sites, uh, and how it can best be developed the most economical way, and provide that information to the board in a final report that we'll be submitting after this meeting. Um, if you remember at the last meeting, uh, we prepared three concept plans for each of the three <laughs> study areas. Uh, we kind of reviewed those concept plans, and again, those concept plans were very similar in nature to each of the sites. They had the same number of buildings, they had a uh, collector road that went through the middle of it, um, they had the same amount of parking, and again, what we tried to do was analyze each site so that way we could compare, or basically compare a site plan for each site, so that way we could compare apples to apples. We don't want to compare apples to oranges. We don't want to have more buildings on one side versus the other. So again, we spent a lot of time preparing those concept plans, and again, trying to do it the most economical way, where buildings were sitting at the high points, um, you know, everything slopes down to the low points where the, where the parking lot might be and things like that. So again, those concept plans were presented at the last meeting, since then, we've taken those concept plans and actually tried to prepare cost estimates on when we look at the grading, the utilities, uh, and the infrastructure needed to develop each of those sites, pad ready sites. So, with that, let's talk about what we've done then. So, moving on through, this is one of the uh, plans that you see with the last one where we kind of showed all three sites and the proximity to each of these sites to the different institutions being UMS, Arkansas Children's Hospital, and UALR. Um, if you look at all three distance or three sites and the distances and compare them all, uh, on an average site one, average distance was 2.4 miles. That is. We're overdue already. Get this up here. I'm supposed to have been here already. Okay, so basically site one, the average is 2.4 miles, site two is 2.4 miles, site three is 2.1 miles. Uh, just because it's it's the most centrally located. I guess if you were to pick a site about right there, that would be the closest. So again, uh, just for just, just some information is that we'll put in our report that we'll give to these guys and to make some decisions. Okay, so let's go to area one. Uh, again, um, the area that we were given was something like that, and it took out a piece right here. We went ahead and included that piece just because, you know, if you're coming down university, you want a nice, attractive entrance into this facility. So our recommendation on that one was to include that piece right there. And we kind of talked about that at the last meeting. Um, again, 60-acre site. This would be the ultimate development, full build out of the site. Um, so let's go and talk about uh, how we do phase one and then, and then how we uh, do the engineering on each of these sites. So phase one. Phase one, coming off university, here's your building one, adjacent parking, construct your collector street, okay? All these phases, again, we're looking at the, or, or each of these sites, we look at the most economical way to develop each of these sites. If we're looking at just phase one, the most economical way is to build the street, build the parking, do all your grading, do all your utility work at one time. Does it have to be done that way? Not necessarily. You could phase it. Um, and that, that, that can be done and, and will likely be done. But again, as we look at each of these sites, we want to look at the most economical way to develop each of them. Yes? Question. Are all these sites that are depend heavily on surface parking? No. There will be structured parking in, in each of these sites. So this one's structured parking. Let me go back to this. If you look at these, okay. are structured parking. Okay. This okay. is surface parking. Oh, where's, where's the surface parking? Right here. 
we have a, a probably 10% surface parking, and then the, the majority of it would be structured parking. Okay. Is that going to be consistent with? That would be consistent with each site. Okay. And again, that's how we did our concept plan. Eventually, I'm sure master plan will be done on the, these particular sites that you may, you know, have more surface in, on one particular area, and you may have more structured on a, another particular area. So. But right now, what we've done is, is we've got equivalent structured parking and equivalent surface parking on each of the sites, so we can analyze each one of them. I like, okay. I like the structured parking. Yeah, because when you put the structured parking in, it reduces the amount of land that you need. That's, that's right. right. Let you have more green space, too. That's right. That's right. Okay. So, again, area one. Um, Phase one. So again, as we analyze each site, we got to have a concept plan to start with, and then we, and then from there, we go into our grading. So we start to grade the site. Uh, this particular site here, uh, we've got clearing limits of about 37 acres. Typically, the city's going to want you to have a, a landscape buffer around it, and so we included all that kind of stuff. Um, this particular site had uh, 170,000 yards. Of material to be moved. Um, I'm sure everybody in the audience can uh, read these contours because that's everybody knows how to do that. Not only just engineers. So let me go to this plan right here. If you can see, this may help you a little bit. <clears throat> the blue area, and then again, this is a program that we use when we do our dirt work quantities. The blue area here, and it's kind of hard to see this, but the darker of a blue, the more of a feel it is. The darker of a red, the more of a cut it is. Are you sure that wasn't a picture from the Weather Channel from the last storm? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, um, as you know, if, if you're familiar with this site, you know the high points back here to the to the north um, east, and as you move down towards the creek, the lower it is, so the more fields you got. Uh, there's actually a lower that comes right through here. So, again, that kind of gives you perspective of uh, of how the cuts and fields bounce on this particular site. Is that flood? Go, go back one, Jerry. Would you? Sure. You're showing that says flood zone. Is, mm -hmm. is that a hundred year flood plain? That's a hundred. What it is, this line right here is your hundred year flood way. Okay. This line right here is a hundred year flood plain. You okay. can feel the flood plain, you've got to stay out of the flood way. Okay. Okay. All right. So there's the cuts and fields. Okay, let's talk about utilities. Sewer, uh, we got major sewer lines. We'll find a common denominator in all the utilities on each of these different sites. The utilities are there. It's pretty much relocating lines, uh, extending new lines to the buildings, and it's going to be very similar to sewer and water and electric and telephone and fiber and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we did, uh, we did go ahead and do the cost estimates on each of those. Um, again, sewer, everything drains this way, so your sewer, the, this line, these darker greens are uh, basically lines to be removed and replaced, and uh, the red lines are the new lines to serve these facilities. Was it force mains? Uh, all gravity. <laughs> gravity. It's gravity. And in, in each site, you'll have gravity lines. We don't have to do any force mains on any of them. Um, I did meet with uh, all the rest of the utility companies and gave them our site plans and said, Give me the cost, and we'll review that at the end. That would be energy for electric, AT and T for fiber and, and cable, um, and um, Central Arkansas water, uh, Little Rock wastewater, and who am I missing? Uh, yes. Center Point. Yeah. Yes. Center Point for energy. Yes. So, all right. So that's the utilities on site one. <coughs> site two. If you remember, uh, we ended up taking this corner right here, included this in our study area, again, for that access, that primary access into the site. Um, everything else is pretty much, uh, and, and we did take this piece out right here. If you remember, uh, it was just a narrow quarter right here that really couldn't serve anything. Uh, didn't help our concept plan out. So uh, again, the concept plan is very similar. Uh, this one is 39.25 acres total. Okay, again, phase one, this is how we would see it being built out for phase one. Uh, building, first building here, adjacent parking. All right. Terry, why aren't we doing water features? 
Are those natural? Are those, are those places that are inclined to be low or wet? Or yes. Why are we Basically, in the in the RFQ or whatever y'all want to look at it is to provide a water feature for each side. Uh, the first side is the Coleman Creek, your water feature. Not a lot to do with that one. Uh, however, there are some trails and things like that that. Uh, that are being built and some restorations. We included some of those costs that you'll see in phase one. We consider that the water feature for, I'm sorry, phase one, area one. Yeah. Area two, yes, this is a low area right here. Uh, typically, you put your detention and um, a water, you can do water feature. A lot of times you'll see retention ponds that yeah. might have a fountain or something in it. Those can be a water feature and double as a detention pond Correct. also. So, uh, again, that is positioned in the low area right there. And in fact, we'll just go to the grading plan. Right now, it's kind of hard to see these grades, but everything drains to this point right here. There's a little piece right here that this all drains this way that are going to that one. And that one, of course, I got the tension spell going on, but um, that's, that, that's the low area right there. So, uh, the grading on this one, <clears throat> the clearing limits are 36 acres. Um, Grading is 127,000 cubic yards. Um, we'll go to the color map. Again, once we put the contours and stuff in, we can do the dirt quantities. And basically, and what we've done is we've balanced each of these sites. Again, y'all are looking to us to provide the most economical way to do each one of them. So we've balanced all the sites. Um, here's your cut area. Cut area. Again, here's the field. That cut right there, that's where our, our pond is. So we've done that out. And again, um, this one's balanced out at 127,000 yards. How does that site um, rank with regard to uh, uh, homes that, that are either abandoned, rented, or owned? That is an analysis we didn't do. Now, I, I will give you the uh, total square footage of demo that we had on each one of them. On the first site, our total demo was 258,774 square foot. Uh, area two was 248,400. And these numbers will be in our final report. And then area three, which we'll look at it in a second, was 265,380. So area three had the most uh, residential homes, commercial, um, basically buildings to be demoed out. So this, Yes, when you're looking when you're looking at the grades, mm -hmm. that's that's fine. But, but you've got to get down to the point where you're cutting. Okay, that's you're, right. Where you're bringing pans and dozers in. So the, the point is, is that what are you going to have to haul off in site two compared to site one? For example, you're talking about asphalt, concrete, asbestos. Mm -hmm. You know, homes with. Uh, Shingles, all right. that stuff. Yeah, you, got, you, got your, you got your driveways and yeah. roadways and stuff like that. Yes, we, we've analyzed all that. And that that's in our okay, so that's all in the report. That okay. is correct. 